What's going on everybody? Cam here from Edmonds Woodshop. Today we're going to be going over how to do a power line test on your CO2 laser. So how many times have you heard we're running your laser at 70, 80, 90, 100% power is bad for your tube? Well, this power line test will help define the relationship between the power percentages that you're entering in Lightburn or RD Works with the actual milliamps that are being produced. So this will help define your limitations for your tube based off of manufacturer specifications. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you an example. To begin, I have to find the max operating current in terms of milliamps for my laser tube. And since I have an OMTEC 80 watt, I know they use EFR laser tubes. EFR is the manufacturer. So I'm going to Google EFR laser tube. And the first thing that pops up is the manufacturer, EFRlaser.com. Now looking at my label on my laser tube, I see that I have an F2. So F is the series for this specific laser tube. I'm going to click on that. And then if I scroll down on their website, you're immediately going to see a chart for the parameters of their laser tubes. So I know I have an F2 based on the laser tube, or the label, excuse me. But depending on what you have, you might have an EFR that has a different number. This right here is your wattage for your laser tubes. Mine's an 80 watt. And this is actually the column that I'm looking for. So operating current is listed in milliamps, and I have an operating current of 28 milliamps. So this is important to know because this is going to be the limitation for my laser tube. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we go to run the power line test. So I'm back at my laser, and I'm getting ready to set up for the power line test. So I'm going to start by placing some scrap into the work bed. And then what I have here is a notepad indicating power percentages starting from 15% all the way down to 100%. And you'll see here that I have the max milliamp working range for 28 milliamps and this is specific to my tube. And this is important because once we start running a series of lines at different power percentages, we're going to want to stop wherever I hit that 28 milliamps because we don't want to overdrive our tube. But this will help us find where our limitation lies. So as we run each line onto our scrap, we are going to go on our notepad and we're going to annotate the milliamps that we read on our milliamp meter. So our milliamp meter, at least for mine, can be found on the side of my laser right there on the power supply. Now some of you may have a analog milliamp meter. Maybe it's installed by yourself and mounted onto your laser body. Um, you're just going to have to read the uh, dial indicator and then annotate it onto your notepad accordingly. So back in Lightburn, you see that we have these series of lines here, and each line represents a different power percentage as indicated on that notepad that I showed you earlier. So this first line, if you come over here, you can see that it's blinks and it's assigned 15% power. This next line is 20% power, and then 25, and then so on all the way to 100. Now, we're not going to run these lines all at the same time because we want to make sure that we don't accidentally overdrive our tube. We want to find out where that max 28 milliamps is hitting. So, I already have these lines created, so not to bore you with creating all of them, but I am going to create an example just so you can create your own. So if we go over here to the left and go to this draw operator, it looks like a pencil, go ahead and click on that. And then if you just click on the screen, and if you hold shift, it will make sure that you have a straight line. So go ahead and click, hit escape, 
hit escape one more time and it takes you back to your select tool. If you click on it and then come up here to where it says width, you can change that to 10 inches. And I like to have extra length just so I have enough time as it engraves to capture the reading on the milliamp meter. So coming over here to the cut and layer settings, I scroll down to the black line. So you can double click and you can assign a speed and we'll say 50. And that's because we want it to go slow enough to where we can read whatever is coming out on the milliamp meter. And then we can assign a power, we'll say 15. And both the max power and min power have to match. So we'll say OK. And that's how you create each one of these lines. So each one of these lines will be a different color. Their speeds will all be 50 and they'll all be in increments of 5 until you get to 100. So if we were to do this one more time, we'll do it in blue. We'll go to the drawing operator. We'll click. We'll hold shift to make sure it goes straight. We'll click. We'll hit escape. And escape one more time. We'll select the line. We'll change the width to 10 inches. And then we'll come over to the cut layer settings and scroll down. We'll double click on the line. We'll change the speed to 50. And then we'll change the max and min power to, we'll say 20. And they both change. And we'll say OK. And that's how you get your lines. So I'm going to delete those since I already have these made. Now, once you have these made, go ahead and turn off your output in this column right here. So output is what the laser is actually going to engrave. Make sure all your modes are in line. Okay? And we're going to toggle all these off. We don't want the laser to engrave these because, like I said, we don't want to accidentally overdrive our tube. And we're going to go line by line and then write the reading down on our notepad. So we're at 15%. We're going to leave that on. So now we're ready to get started with engraving. Here is the first line of the power line test at 15% in 3, 2, 1. We get a reading of 7 milliamps. Now we want to toggle off the 15% power line and we want to toggle on the 20% power line. And from here on out, this is what we're going to be doing with the remaining uh, power lines here. We're going to be toggling them off and toggling them on. 20% power in 3, 2, 1. And we got a reading of 8 milliamps. So you can see right around 85% I was topping out at my max of 28 milliamps. So there's no need to go to 90, 95, or 100 because I would be overdriving my tube which would inherently be shortening the lifespan of my laser tube. So based off this chart we know that our range falls anywhere between 15% power and 85% power. Now, a manufacturer will recommend a working milliamp range, and I know for my manufacturer they recommend a 26 milliamp range for just working, but the general rule of thumb is that 
the less power that you use or the less milliamp that you use, the more life you'll get out of your laser tube. So personally, I tend to stick around the 50 to 55% power range, which also equates to the 18 and 20 milliamp range, because I know that this is good enough for me to cut through quarter inch material, which is generally what I work with. All right, guys, so that was a ton of information. Hopefully it all makes sense. If it didn't, you guys got questions, leave it in the comment box below. Um, one of the things that I do want you to make sure you understand is that you're gonna have to consult with your tube manufacturer to find out where your specific working milliamp range is. So um, they will vary from tube to tube, from different wattages, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So definitely make sure you check out your manufacturer's specifications. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you don't mind, please subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.